Caroline went to Jesus' tomb to anoint his body. However, according to the Gospel, Jesus was not in the tomb. Moments later, she encountered him holding a shovel? What's the meaning behind this? Why does Jesus need a rake or a hoe? Why do some paintings depict him wearing a gardener's hat? Welcome to program Fine Art. My name is Basia Sali Hoffman and today we'll unravel the mysteries of Eastern paintings. Easter is the most important Christian holiday. Although the moment of Christ's resurrection is not described in any of the four Gospels, artists for centuries have depicted the risen Jesus, often with a banner symbolizing victory over death. But instead of a banner, Jesus often holds gardening tools. So where do the shovel and hoe come from? and quite successful vegetable harvest. To understand this scene, we need to turn to the Gospel according to St. John. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other one at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. So this is where all these shovels, holes, gardening hats and wheelbarrows come from. Since Mary Magdalene mistook Jesus for a gardener, artists assumed he must have resembled one in some way. But there is also another interpretation of all this gardening equipment of Christ. Jesus was symbolically tending a garden in which faith is meant to grow. However, depicting it so literally is another matter. But why then does Jesus not allow Mary Magdalene to approach him? In some representation it's rather vigorously. Let's return for a moment to the words of the evangelist. She said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbi which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Nolimetangere, in Latin meaning do not touch me. Even better, expressed in Greek, memo hapto, do not cling to me. These were the words Jesus spoke to Mary Magdalene. Hence, the noticeable rejection of Mary Magdalene by Jesus in those representations sometimes truly spectacular. It's worth noting that Jesus with a shovel appeared not only in paintings by 
outstanding creators such as Titian, Rembrandt, Correggio or Agnolo Bronzino, to name just a few. This motif also appears in sculpture, again among truly excellent and recognized creators such as the Mariacki altar by Wittstwosch or in the sculpture designed by Gian Lorenzo Bernini and executed by his student Antonio Raggi. Have you noticed that in some of the paintings presented today the same person appears in two places within the same image? Here we have Jesus in the foreground in the scene of Noli Me Tangere and in the background rising from the dead. Here Mary Magdalene crying at Jesus' tomb and in the foreground rejoicing at his presence. In art history this is called simultaneous, simultaneous composition, characterized by placing two or more episodes or events from a story within one composition, so that they seem to create one scene, even though they refer to different moments of the illustrated narrative. For the contemporary viewers, this situation can be very confusing because it's quite an unintuitive way for us to illustrate scenes taking place at different times and places within one representation. Simultaneous compositions appeared primarily in ancient and medieval art. They almost completely disappeared in the 16th century. At the holiday table, we can create quite a stir by talking about the captivating pictures depicting Jesus with a shovel. I wish you all a wonderful and joyful Easter holiday and warmly invite you to the next episodes.